Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be proving an inequality for real numbers x and y. We have x plus y times 1 minus xy divided by the product of 1 plus x squared and 1 plus y squared and we want to show that the absolute value of this expression is less than or equal to 1 half. So let's go ahead and write down this inequality in a different form and then we'll use some interesting methods to prove this inequality. Okay. Since this is absolute value and we're given that this expression is between uh, or the absolute value is less than or equal to one half, I can write this as an inequality with the one half and negative one half on either side using the definition of absolute value. So my expression is supposed to be between negative one half and positive one half. So we're going to be taking each expression here, and I'm pretty sure there's more than one way to do this, and I'm pretty sure somebody's gonna, or more than one person is gonna write in the comment section, uh, a very quick method for this, but this uh, here's my approach. I'm going to be using substitution. And since x and y are real numbers, we can just do the following. Replace x with tangent alpha, and y with tangent beta. Now alpha and beta, don't have to be different, they can be the same if x and y are the same, or they could be different. Now, we're going to substitute this into each one of these expressions and simplify each one, and then put it all together, and then at the end, we're going to prove that the expression in the middle is between negative one-half and positive one-half. Let's see what happens to each piece. I'm going to start with x plus y. x plus y can be written as tangent alpha plus tangent beta. And this can be written as sine alpha over cosine alpha plus sine beta over cosine beta. Now let's make a common denominator and then we can write this as sine alpha cosine beta plus sine beta times cosine alpha all over cosine alpha cosine beta. Now if you look at the numerator, you'll notice that it can be written as uh, the sine of a sum. So we can basically write the numerator as sine alpha plus beta using the sum and difference formulas. And that'll be divided by cosine alpha times cosine beta. Okay, great. So this is going to be my expression for x plus y. I'm going to substitute that later on. But first, let's go ahead and find out what 1 minus xy is going to look like. Okay. Now again, replacing x with tangent alpha and y with tangent beta, we get the following, and we're, use, we're gonna use the sine over cosine. Now, if you make a common denominator and multiply across, you're gonna get the following. Cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus sine alpha, sine beta, divided by cosine alpha times cosine beta. And this is equal to one minus xy, part of my expression. Now, if you look at the numerator, we got something similar, and this can be written as cosine alpha plus beta. Notice the difference in sine plus minus sines, and this is what one minus xy is equivalent to. Let's go ahead and save it for future use, and now we're gonna be looking at one plus x squared and one plus y squared. They're going to be similar, so let's see what that looks like. 1 plus x squared. Now I'm going to replace x with tangent alpha, so it's going to be 1 plus tangent squared alpha. As you know, or you should know, tangent 1 plus tangent squared is equal to secant squared. But let's say you didn't know this. You could write tangent as sine over cosine, and then make a common denominator. You would get the following. And as you know, or you should know, Pythagorean theorem is the most important one in trigonometry. Cosine squared plus sine squared is always equal to 1, and this will be 1 over cosine squared alpha. Or you can write it as secant squared alpha, but I'm going to leave it as 1 over cosine squared alpha. So 1 plus x squared can be written as 1 over cosine squared alpha. Similarly, we can write 1 plus y squared as 1 over cosine squared beta. Going through the same steps, since y can be written as tangent beta, we get the following for 1 plus y squared. Great, so we got four results. We got something for x plus y, we got something for 1 minus xy, and then we got two things for 1 plus x squared and 1 plus y squared. Now we're gonna put it all together 
and complete the picture. So let's go ahead and substitute everything into our original expression. But first, let's remember what our original expression was, right? Our original expression was x plus y multiplied by 1 minus xy divided by 1 plus x squared multiplied by 1 plus y squared. Great. And we were trying to prove that this is between negative 1 half and 1 half inclusive. So now we're going to use uh, the substitution here. x plus y is equal, equivalent to that. So let's go ahead and replace x plus y with that. x plus y, x plus y replaced with sine alpha plus beta divided by cosine alpha cosine beta. Let's replace 1 minus xy with cosine alpha plus beta divided by cosine alpha cosine beta. Great. That is going to be my numerator. Let's go ahead and replace 1 plus x squared with what it is and 1 plus y squared with what it is. And that's going to be my denominator. Now 1 plus x squared, if you remember, we wrote it as 1 over cosine squared alpha. So let's go ahead and do that. 1 over cosine squared alpha. And 1 plus y squared was, was written as 1 over cosine squared beta. Great. This kind of looks confusing or maybe a little complicated, but don't worry, we're going to simplify this. So let's go ahead and take care of the numerator first. The numerator, this is a complex fraction because the numerator and the denominator are made up of fractions. So let's go ahead and take care of the top first. When you multiply those together, you basically get a product. We'll deal with that later. Let's just write it as a product for now sine alpha plus beta multiplied by cosine alpha plus beta and that is divided by cosine alpha cosine beta times the same thing. So can I write this as cosine squared alpha times cosine squared beta? Absolutely. And now let's take a look at the bottom. Now the top will be divided by the bottom so that means we're going to flip the bottom and multiply so we can safely write this as cosine squared alpha times cosine squared beta. And what that gives you is you can simplify this, right? Okay, so cosine squared alpha cancels out, cosine squared beta cancels out. I know you're saying something like, what happens if this is zero, so on and so forth. Let's forget about all these things. You can exclude all those values. Okay, now this product should give me something nice. But remember, I was trying to prove that this is between negative one and one, negative one half and positive one half. How do I do that? Well, remembering the formula for sine of 2x, which was 2 sine x cosine x, I do have something that looks like sine x cosine x. And can I write it as sine 2x divided by 2? Absolutely. So this expression, this product, can basically be written as sine of 2 alpha plus 2 beta divided by 2. And guess what? We know that sine of an angle is always between negative 1 and positive 1. So half of that will be between 1 half and negative one half. And this proves that our expression is always going to be between negative one half and positive one half. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Tomorrow I'll see you with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.